My name is Kaylee Africa, this is Heavy Chef, and today we're talking to a woman who needs very little introduction from me, Zolani Mahola, well known for being the lead singer of a band called Fresh Free Ground, which she formed in 2002 with six other members. Zolani has traveled and performed alongside Robbie Williams. She has added her voice to the Polytones album and in 2010 World Cup, alongside Shakira and her band Freshly Ground, performed the opening and closing song called Waka Waka. This woman needs very little introduction from me and it is a great pleasure to have her speaking on the Heavy Chef stage about the business of creative output. Thank you so much for being with us today. It is such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Before we talk about the business side of creative yeah. output, which I don't think that there's anyone better to speak about it than you, take me back to where you were born. Yeah. So I was born in the Eastern Cape. I was born sure. in Port Elizabeth. Sure. Um, that was in the very early 80s, 1981. Yeah. Sure. So that was still, still about eight days. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, and in my coming of age, it happened during the transition into the new South Africa. Sure, yeah. which is quite remarkable. I mean, I do understand that coming of age, because in 1989, I was yes. actually in a small village called Willowvale. Yes. Okay. So we had the opposite, where we were like the only white family in yes. the village. And so we saw the transition from a different perspective. Yes. But it, it was really something to behold. And I think the energy during that time was palpable for me as a youngster, but I can't imagine as a creative coming into her own what it felt like. Yeah. So talk to me about the inflection point where Zolani realized I have a gift in the creative space, but I can actually use this gift to survive, to make money. Yeah. You know, I only really thought about it in those terms when I was quite a bit into my career, really. Sure. Um, I, my aim was always to be um, an actress. That's what I studied at UCT, and I sort of happened into the music, almost accidentally, but you know, there's no accident. Yeah, sure. It was really only a few years into making music that I started seeing it as, oh, I'm making a living, I'm making ends sure. meet, and also with the realization that a lot of other artists maybe weren't as, weren't really making ends meet as, as I was, and so sure. realizing that I was in quite a fortunate position. And what led you to being in that position? I mean, if you can look back when you first started making money, what were the factors that allowed that to happen? Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of it, a lot of the thing that comes into play for me is was realizing the value, what I, what I had to bring, you know, had for people. Sure. Um, and for myself in my own life, you know, but like, the fact that people really were responding to the thing that was coming from deep inside of me and were responding with a monetary value, sure. you know, so, so when, when the gigs start paying a little bit more sure. um, or when you start traveling outside of the country and then outside of the continent, you sure. know, and then you start seeing the value that people place, then you yourself, even as an individual, as, an, as a creative, start to feel like, oh, okay, so X can equal that, sure. you know, and the more you realize that value, I think it can only help you to, to, to fly even further. Sure, and at an early stage, did you have agents around you helping you reaffirm your value? So our agent was really, she was a girlfriend of one of the guys in the, um, in the band. Sure. So she really grew with us. Um, as we were growing and, and she learned with us. So we made a lot of mistakes along the sure. way and you know and, and we didn't re a lot of the time we didn't really understand that this value that I'm talking about not just monetarily but just mm -hmm. the value of what we really meant to the country and 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 I don't know what what we really really embodied for people. Yeah. So it was there were, there've been a lot of learning curves. A and, lot over the years. And you mentioned the word mistakes. I mean, all of us go through life making mistakes on a daily basis. But if yeah. you look at your journey as yes. a creative, yes. what would you say are the two greatest mistakes that you've made, if you're willing to talk to it? Sure. I think that one of the greatest mistakes that I've personally made was taking it for granted. Um, so 
once once you're on a trajectory where you are you're successful you know you you what i did was that i got complacent in it you know i sort of got wrapped up in the machine of the music business and i stopped really taking care of for quite a while of the art sure. of it sure. you know and really taking ownership of mm of my own journey within the music business. Sure. So that's a mis that's a mistake, but you know what, you say mistake, but you learn. 100%. You know, you learn from these things. And maybe another one was um, maybe giving too much agency or too much power over um, to people like record companies. Sure. You know, or, or agents, sure. or um, yeah, sort of handing over your own business to somebody somebody outside of the actual sure. you know, center. Sure, and I mean, since those days when you started out and record labels hold the majority of the say or majority of the power, I think we've come a long way. We've come a long way. Looking at what the digital arena offers. 100%. With that in mind, I mean, I'm 29 years old at this point in time. I'm sitting as like a young creative yeah. starting out. What yeah. advice do you have for someone like me? Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of us out there in the yes. South African space alone. Yes. So I have maybe two pieces of advice. Sure. The first piece of advice is really learn your craft. You know, you are the only person in this whole universe who can do things the way that you can. Sure. You have a unique gift and that goes for absolutely every single person on this planet. You as a creative have the responsibility to really learn your craft if you're a singer, you know, a, up your skills sure you know if you're an instrumentalist up your skills if you're a DJ up your skills the better you are the luckier you're actually gonna get so that's one sure and then I would say really in this in this day and age we, we touched upon the fact that record companies have much less power sure. you as the artist have a lot more power actually and a lot more say in how much you give over to that record company or to that label or to any agency for that matter. Sure. And there's a lot of stuff that you can actually do yourself. Sure. Um, so I would say really learn your business. You know, luckily now, you know, there's the, there's, you've got the internet sure. at your fingertips. You've got so much information. Sure. You can use it. Sure. Yeah. And apart from, this business side of creative output. Yeah. Like we often talk about the Leo DiCaprio principle, which is put everything into what you're doing. When you go out there and you perform as a creative, let go of that inhibition that you may be holding on to. How would you say, or what advice do you have for creatives in, to enable them to like really embrace this Leo principle? I would say it's, it's a matter of digging really deep. You know, it's a matter of really, as a creative, we need to be in touch with ourselves. Yeah. We need to spend time with ourselves, developing ourselves, because all of this, this magic is coming through us. Sure. You know, so, so as much as you can, the more you can work with this, with this, you know, you know with this, with this the further you're going to get because it's coming from a real authentic place. You know, that's that's what I would say. Spend Aaron. time with yourself. Thank you so much. And that, folks, is Zolani Mahola on successfully navigating the business side of creative output. Now, if you'd like to hear more from her, then, of course, you can come on out to Bandwidth Barn on the 3rd of August in Ekailicha. And if you'd like to hear more details about the event or to book your tickets, then, of course, you can go to www.heavyshef.com. We certainly hope to see you there. And that, folks, is Kaylee Africa signing out of the Heavy Chef interview chair. Hambakahle.